Take a look at this. You are looking at one of the first kinds of early warning systems used to detect incoming aircraft and sea vessels during World War I. A forerunner of radar, these acoustic mirrors were built on the south and northeast coasts of England between 1916 and 1930. They're early warning systems, and they've clearly come a long way in the last century. In today's episode, we'll look at the latest systems scanning the skies above our heads. Welcome back to Phase Out, a science and engineering show brought to you by Bliley Technologies. I am your host, Sean Vidorko, and today we are exploring the technology behind Ballistic Missile Defense, or BMD systems. You've probably heard a lot of talk recently about countries like North Korea developing intercontinental ballistic missiles, or ICBMs, capable of striking targets halfway around the world. So you might be wondering what kinds of technologies are being developed to mitigate ICBMs. Well. Let's take a look at the fascinating technology behind these BMD systems. Tracking a relatively small object traveling at a maximum speed of 7 kilometers a second is no small task. It's made even more difficult because there are usually decoys launched at the same time to confuse tracking efforts. A BMD system is comprised of satellite sensors, ground and maritime based radars, and interceptors. Each system is designed to detect, track, and or intercept during three distinct phases of a projectile flight. Boost, mid-course, and terminal. Satellite infrared sensors monitor known launch areas for heat signatures. Once a launch is detected by a satellite, the tracking is transferred to forward deployed radar systems. The Aegis is designed to intercept short and medium range threats through the use of radar tracking and interceptor launch. The ground-based mid-course defense, GMD, track initial and projected trajectory of an object with radar data and can launch interceptor devices. These interceptors reach space and collide with an object. Now, these systems are so accurate that they could track a baseball hit out of a stadium hundreds of miles away. And in fact, the Raytheon TPY-2 could track dozens of baseballs simultaneously hit out of that stadium and zero in on a single one telling the catcher exactly where to stand to catch the ball. The THAAD system is used to neutralize threats in the terminal phase. The THAAD system consists of radar, interceptors, launchers, and fire control systems that are deployable by truck. The THAAD system is designed to combat short and medium range devices. It's the newest BMD system and currently has a 100% success rate during flight testing. Finally, the Patriot Advanced Capability 3 or PAC-3 system, is used to combat threats in the terminal phase. The PAC-3 is the most mature BMD system. It's designed to combat short and medium range devices. It can intercept at much lower altitudes than the THAAD systems. All of these interception systems require incredibly accurate targeting. That's why the communications device on board the interceptor missiles utilized a special kind of oscillator known as an oven-controlled crystal oscillator, or OCXO. Oven-controlled means that the quartz crystal is encased in a miniature oven that helps regulate the temperature of the crystal. Changes in altitude and rising temperatures from the missile itself during launch and flight are major factors that would otherwise distort that temperature. Large or sudden deviations in the exterior temperature can alter the signal that the crystal produces. Essentially, any temperature fluctuation could completely sever communication with the device. This is simply not an option when communicating with a critical military device. OCXOs produced by Bliley Technologies 
Well, they're great at handling high levels of vibration and phase noise. Speaking of phase noise, we do have a great video all about it on our channel, so be sure to check that out, as well as our other videos now and in the future. Be sure to like, subscribe, and, and please comment with your thoughts and suggestions about how this science and engineering show can bring you stories and information that you're interested in. Once again, I am your host, Sean Fedorko, and thank you, phasers, for phasing out with us. Oh,